One of the questions we have is, what kind of time are we living in? Parents are scared that maybe they can no longer even send their children out to school or to college because of these Islamophobic sentiments. So here is a tweet from maybe in the past few days from Pamela Geller, who's one of the lead Islamophobes in America. And she has won this case, so to speak, that she has the right to post this offensive ad in, in, in the MTA, which is like the CTA of New York, the, the subway system. And it says something along the lines of, killing Jews is my form of worshiping Allah. That is my jihad. What's your jihad? So we live in a time where this has the right to be displayed, and it will be displayed, and it is being displayed. And on the at the same time, we're also dealing with the issue of extremism too. So how can the Muslim Ummah approach these two issues is what we kind of want to talk about. Why is this happening from a sociological and a political level? I think it is pretty obvious that uh, every community in the world, every community needs a scapegoat. It is human nature. Every community needs another community to blame its woes on. And America has gone through a number of phases. It's not the first time. Anybody who studies American history, so a hundred years ago, right now, 100 years ago, the, per, the people that were being blamed were actually the Chinese. They called them the yellow. They felt these people are coming and they're taking over our jobs and they're, and they're gonna change our way of life and whatnot. And so Congress actually passed an act. It is called the Yellow Act, go Google it. It's called the Yellow Act. And the Yellow Act prohibited Far Easterners from migrating to America. And that is why from 19, I don't know the date, 415 or something, up until 1960, for when the Yellow Act was appealed uh, by Ted Kennedy, uh, by JFK's younger brother, up until that point in time, people like us, the Middle Easterners, could really hardly ever, ever come to America. It was the exception and not the rule that somebody from India, Pakistan, Egypt could come uh, in, in that period of time. Only after the Yellow Act was repealed was when all of you guys basically were able to come because of the repealing of the Yellow Act. My point being, it's not the first time. In the 30s and 40s, America had this huge scare of the communists. The Reds are coming. From the Yellows, they came the Reds. Okay, So the Reds are coming. The Reds are this. And you've all heard of the McCarthy era. You've all heard of the blacklisting of, uh, of the paranoia that overtook America. right? So it's natural for a majority to want a scapegoating minority. It so happens we are one of the main scapegoats that a certain segment has. If you look at history, Always, it's just a period of time and then another group is found. In the meantime, that minority needs to make the best of its efforts to remove the stigma. And the way they can remove the stigma is by humanizing themselves. Because these ads and these things are dehumanizing. You cannot hate somebody if you acknowledge him as an equal human being. The only way you can hate a race or a group or a nation is when you consider them to be inferior. Their beliefs, their skin colors, whatever it might be. So these types of campaigns are nothing new. It's just that we are the ones that are the brunt of it. So there's a bit of psychology there. Of Allah, Allah.